consumption of meat in particular. Okay, thank you. Dr. Steinfeld is not very optimistic, but he also points to a lack of real political will to change things. Yet, is this enough to lead us to despair? Well, I don't think so. There are some rays of hope, tiny rays of hope. I think that is just because people simply don't know. I'm sure that if they knew, they'd want to change their eating habits. But even politicians, who you would expect to know more, haven't got the faintest clue. This became crystal clear during a recent debate on deforestation in the Dutch parliament. The ontbossing, meneer Blom, zoals u weet, wordt voor een heel groot deel ook veroorzaakt door onze intensieve veehouderij. Ja, ik vind het altijd verbazingwekkend hoe de Partij van de Dieren in staat is om het onderwerp per interruptie te, te, te introduceren, wat absoluut niet gaat over de tekst die ik hier vooruit sprak. U moet mij niet kwalijk nemen dat ik geen idee heb wat de relatie is tussen intensieve vederij, veehouderij en de relatie tot ontbossing. Ik weet niet waar. Het spijt me, maar dat moet ik helaas dat zie het antwoord niet. op schuldig blijven. Nee, dat zie ik me waarschijnlijk niet, maar ik weet het gewoon niet. Maar in fact, it's all so simple. Less meat, fewer animals, reduced greenhouse gas emissions, reduced water use and less deforestation. Johan Rank has directed music videos for Madonna, Beyoncé and Robbie Williams. And when he heard about the environmental problems caused by livestock farming, he thought, shit, man, <laughs> and made a very simple yet very effective short film that I don't want to keep from you. In 2007, the English newspaper The Daily Mail published an article called Secret Plan to Turn Us All Veggie. And I quote, Secret plans to encourage the nation to give up eating meat are being examined by the government to help save the planet. A leaked email expresses sympathy for the environmental benefits of a mass switch to a vegan diet. That's interesting. How much could reduced meat eating contribute to carbon savings. Together with the Free University Amsterdam, the Nicholas G. Pearson Foundation set out to discover what kind of carbon savings could be made in the US if they all went without meat for one or more days. And this is the result. If all Americans ate vegetarian for seven days, 
they would save around 700 megatons of greenhouse gas emissions. That would be just the same as taking all the cars in America off the roads. Every single car. If everyone in America didn't eat meat for six days a week, this would make the same carbon savings as eliminating the total electricity use of all households in the States. This would result in carbon savings equivalent to planting 13 billion trees in your garden and letting them grow for 10 years. That's 43 trees for every American. This would result in carbon savings equivalent to halving the domestic use of all electricity, gas, oil, petroleum and kerosene in the United States. If all Americans cut out meat for three days, they would save almost 300 megatons of greenhouse gas emissions. This would have a greater impact on reducing global warming than if all cars in the US were replaced with Toyota Priuses. This would have the same positive effect on reducing greenhouse gases as replacing all household appliances like fridges, freezers, microwave ovens, dishwashers, washing machines, tumble dryers, and so on and so forth. And I mean replacing all appliances with energy efficient ones. Wouldn't that be great? What do you think? Would cutting out meat for just one day really have any effect? Well, I was flabbergasted with the results. If all Americans didn't eat meat for just one day a week, this would save 90 million plane tickets from New York to LA or from LA to New York. 90 million tickets each year just by eating no meat for just one day a week. You see, You see, a small step for a man is a giant leap for humanity and all living creatures. And you don't have to wait. You can start today with your own tasty and simple solution to the climate problem. The question we have to ask ourselves is simply, how many days a week shall I go without meat to reduce global warming? I think it would help, if, especially if they did one day a week. I think that makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference not only for the environment, but for the animals themselves, and then for our bodies. Not only think it would help what you're talking about, but I think it would help the karma also. <laughs> Greenhouse gas is a really important thing. Global warming is really important. But does anybody ever talk about the amount of water it takes? There's so much waste. And I think if more people were aware of that, they would make they would make the choice because it's a very easy thing to do. It's a very easy choice to make to just skip meat for a day, one day a week, you know, and then one day becomes two days, and then two days becomes three days, and gradually it, it can make a significant, significant impact. Absolutely, being a vegetarian uses one tenth the resources than eating meat does. So obviously it would help you know perpetuate human life on earth that everyone did hopefully it all turns around i think it's the missing it's definitely was the missing part of the inconvenient truth animals are suffering people are suffering i mean it, it, we need to do something quickly you know you can't be a meat eater and call yourself an environmentalist you can get a lot of protein from peanuts i was raised in canada meat and potatoes i never was a big meat eater my whole life but you're raised that way and it's really hard to to switch gears so um I think when people just do, do the best they can. You should all eat less animals, or maybe just men. I think that would make a tremendous difference. You don't have to go 100% vegetarian, but we don't have to just have this mass gorging of meat that happens, especially in the United States of America. Yes, I, I don't expect everyone on the planet to give up all meat. I think that's unrealistic. Uh, but I do think we could get people to understand that meat shouldn't be something they have for their own health. <laughs> on as regular a basis as, as they do have it. People don't think twice when they eat meat. People don't think twice the way their meat is manufactured. People don't think twice about those factory farming practices because it's not as close to them. 
But yet, if you're driving in a car, an SUV that may be much bigger and is not a hybrid, possibly like your car, is something that you can pick on. It's an easy thing to pick on, but we need to start picking on ourselves and we need to start picking carefully what we eat, how we eat, when we eat it, where we get it from. We need to do the research and do the work to find those things out and make ourselves smarter. So if we're going to talk about SUVs and car emissions, we can also be smart enough to find out where most of those emissions are actually coming from. Right. Actually, the solution to our climate problem is child's play. The production of one kilogram of beef is just as bad for the environment as driving around in the car for three hours while you left all your lights on at home. If all people in the world started eating as much meat as we do, then we'd need nearly three planets to be able to feed them all. And that's not possible. If we all didn't eat meat for three days a week, this would lead to the same carbon savings of halving the electricity use in all households in the United States. A vegetarian in a hammer produces fewer carbon emissions than a meat eater in a Toyota Prius. But a vegetarian on a bike is much better. There are hundreds of millions of vegetarians today and many more people who have already started eating less meat. Personally, I like to call them meat leavers. No, you didn't hear me wrong, I didn't say meat cleavers, but meat leavers. And if you've heard all this and are still not convinced, if climate change doesn't really matter to you, then why not just reduce your meat consumption for the sake of the animals, because they cannot stand up for themselves and are the direct victims of our excesses. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Fat and docile, big and dumb, they look so stupid, they aren't much fun. Cows aren't fun They eat to grow, grow to die Die to be et at the hamburger fry Cows well done Nobody thunk it, nobody knew No one imagined the great cow guru Cows are one he hid in the forest, read books with great zeal. He loved Che Guevara, a revolutionary veal. Cow say tongue. He spoke about justice, but nobody stirred. He felt like an outcast, alone in the herd. Cow doll drums. He moved, we must fight, escape or we'll die. Cows gathered around, cause the stakes were so high. Bad cow pun But then he was captured, stuffed into a crate Loaded onto a truck where he rode to his fate Cows are bummed He was a scrawny calf who looked rather woozy No one suspected he was packing an Uzi Cows with guns They came with a needle to stick in his thigh He kicked for the groin he pissed in their eye. Cow well hung. Knocked over a tractor and ran for the door. Six gallons of gas flowed out on the floor. Run, cows, run. He picked up a bullhorn and jumped up on the hay. We are free roving bovines. We run free today. We will fight for bovine freedom and hold our large heads high. We will run free with the buffalo or die. Cows with guns. Crashed the gate in a great stampede Tipped over milk truck, torched all the feed Cows have fun 
60 police cars were piled.